Hello everyone and welcome to another incredible game also from round one of the currently uh, played uh, WR Chess Masters tournament. It's a game between Nodirbek Abdusatrov and uh, Andrei Yesipenko and it's one of those games that uh, uh, will make you again believe in magic. Uh, the positions that happen in this game and the combinations you have to find, uh, I don't know, even even if you solve 100 puzzles a day, uh, like before breakfast, I don't know if you, you will be able to solve uh, everything that happens here. Uh, uh, that being said, uh, that does not mean you should not be solving puzzles before breakfast you should always solve at least 20 puzzles before breakfast um you will you know either become a, a great player or or you will lose weight or, or i mean you're really going to enjoy your meal uh it's a it's a win-win how, however you put it but that being said let's check it out as this is this is just mind-blowing so uh Nodirbek has the white pieces and he opens with d4 we have knight to f6 c4 e6 knight to c3 inviting the nimzo indian defense and that's exactly what yesipenko goes for the nimzo indian and there are many ways to um, uh uh, to play around this bishop to b4 move uh, he goes for the uh, standard line pawn to e3 which okay you can double white spawns with bishop captures on c3 uh, but this is nothing spectacular uh, white has a very strong center white will even play f3 e4 we're gonna put bishops on e3 uh, and and d3 maybe knight h3 and we'll have a very very solid game so this is not a serious attempt for black especially not on the absolute highest level so here are just castles with bishop to d2 and now pawn to b6 yesipenko prepares the uh, fianchetto his light square bishop bishop to d3 and now pawn to d5 uh, very nicely done uh, grabbing the center c captures e captures and now knight to f3 the knight is coming to this e5 square and then you will cement it with pawn to f4 uh, rook to e8 we have rook to c1 and now the bishop um, uh, is no longer useful on b4 bishop back to f8 where it will uh, serve as additional support for pawn to c5 push so here castles bishop to b7 and now uh, there is a game where Ponta C5 was played. Uh, it was played in the in the uh, Serbian Team Championship um, uh, in 2020, three years ago, between uh, Luka Bodisavljevic and Aleksandar Pretke, where Pretke won a very nice game. Uh, but here we have, uh, instead of Ponta C5, we have Knight to E5, uh, and it is now as of move... Uh, sorry, uh, Bishop to B7 is the new move, uh, my bad. Uh, instead of C5, Bishop to B7 was played, and it is now as of move uh, 10 that we have a complete completely new game so knight to e5 as planned we have c5 now as you do have additional support for this push and pawn to f4 so you don't care if black uh, develops the knight tries to capture you will very happily play f captures on e5 open up the f file for your rook and you will constantly have uh, pressure on that f uh, f6 square so knight to c6 we have knight to e2 uh, very nicely done now you are putting more pressure to that c5 pawn but you really want to bring your knight to the g3 and then you will have access to uh, some amazing squares like f5 and h5 knight to e4 and now knight to g3 and this is already already on move uh, 14 where the magic happens uh andre uh, plays knight captures on d2 and it makes sense it's it's such a, a normal looking move to play you eliminate the defender of the e3 pawn the e3 pawn is a backwards pawn you hope to um, uh, put constant pressure on that e3 pawn pretty much for the rest of the game and that's uh, how, how you will play this but Nodrebek does not capture back nope uh, he plays bishop captures on h7 we've reached the position from the thumbnail and now okay you can see that queen h5 queen captures on f7 is coming but is this really is this really enough so let's see what he had in mind king captures on h7 queen to h5 with check king to g8 and queen captures on f7 with check and now the problem is uh you do not have king to h7 you might think okay uh, king to h7 and now we just have a repetition with queen h5 queen to f7 uh, but this is actually a forced win for white and it's quite a nice one queen to g6 check king to g8 and knight f5 and uh it, it doesn't look like much but there's uh nothing for uh, for black to do here even if you trade some of the attackers like captures captures knight captures on f1 you can even grab the rook rook captures and play rookie seven you might be asking yourself uh, but where, where where's the mate what, what is this well e6 that's the that's the problem for black and now after queen to e8 offering a queen trade knight to h6 with check king to h8 and knight to f7 with check and now it doesn't matter what you play 
King to g8, queen h5, and the only way to stop checkmate, at least for the moment, is to grab the knight here. Rook captures, pawn captures, nicely connecting with the king and queen. You have to capture, queen captures on f7 with check, and that's it. Very quickly, the rook uh, will come into the action and checkmate the black king. So you do not have king to h7. So uh, uh, Andre tries king to h8, but even this does not help all that much. Knight to g6 with check. King to h7, and now the knight comes to h5. And now, when you look at this, uh, yeah, it's just very hard to believe that there's nothing there. Something has to be here. Uh, and uh, how, how do you defend? The the uh, threat is pretty simple. Okay, the bishop on b7 is hanging, but of course none of you were uh, looking at that bishop. Uh, the real threat is a knight captures an f8 with check, removing the defender of the g7 pawn, and then you just checkmate the black king with queen captures on g7. So here, there is only one defense, and Yesipenko finds it. Rook to e6. You give up a full rook, uh, because now if knight captures an f8 with check, then queen captures will defend the g7 pawn. And it's very tricky how to play this. The best way to play this is to capture the rook on e6, which is not what Noderbeck does. And he does give uh, uh, Andre uh, one slight opportunity to, to get back into the game. But uh, I mean, uh, you, you'll see what happens. So uh, in the game, f5 was played, but I will just show you the win after queen captures on e6 because it's just disgusting. Knight captures on f1, rook captures on f1, and now, of course, queen to e8. You want to trade queens. Now, knight captures on f8, queen captures, and rook to f3, trying to get that rook to h3. Rook to e8, uh, uh, attacking the queen, now knight to f6. This is the move you would have to see if you actually played queen captures on e6, which is not very easy. Uh, queen captures, rook to h3 with check, and now you have to go back. King to g6. Now comes pawn to f5 with check. King to g5, and now queen captures on e8, threatening queen to h5 checkmate. And there's just no move here. Uh, for, for black, you, you you can capture, but then rook to h5 comes with check. You're gonna uh, win the black queen. Doesn't doesn't really matter what uh, black does. And again, you you will get checkmated here. So that's how you win with queen captures on e6. But Nodrebek played pawn to f5, and it's not getting any easier for black. However, with perfect play, it is possible to survive this. And uh, uh, in the game, knight captures on f1 happened, which is perfectly fine. Rook captures on f1, and now queen to g5. This is where uh, Andre uh, really uh, uh, sort of uh, drops the ball. Uh, queen to e8 was the way to defend the position, because now knight captures on f8 check, queen captures, and f captures on e6. Uh, you get this position, captures, captures, and it looks really ugly for black, but it is possible to defend bishop a6, and okay, let's say d captures, d captures, you're going to capture on g7, and uh, you are uh, up a full bishop, you, you are down three pawns, but you're up a full bishop, so you should be able to play this. Uh, but instead, in the game, queen to g5 was played, offering the rook for the knight on h5, and now look at this, queen captures on e6, we have queen captures on h5, and now rook to f3, going after rook to h3. Uh, the problem is, uh, Noderbeck already sacrificed a whole lot of material just to get this position, and uh, uh, if, if rook to h3, uh, uh the, the queen just uh, uh, takes the rook and you ha you do have sufficient material for the, for the queen so in the game c captures on d4 was played now uh, it's even it's even better because now if you play uh something like rook to h3 then of course just queen captures on h3 d captures and d captures on e3 black has uh, so much material for the queen uh, two bishops and the rook and the pass pawn on e3 you cannot capture back because of bishop c5 um, uh, skewers the white queen uh, and uh, other than that, you, you really don't have much to hope for here with white. It's still a draw with perfect play, but uh, uh, w I mean, an ugly way to ruin such a beautiful position. However, there is one move that wins the game for Noderbeck here, and it, it is the one that um, uh, Yesipenko missed when he went uh, for, for queen to g5 instead of that queen to e8 move. So feel free to pause the video and uh, do the magic for Noderbeck while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the queen is completely trapped. But I don't mean uh, via rook to h3. The queen is completely trapped via queen to f7. This is what uh, Noderbeck played, and now there is no move that saves Yesipenko. Uh, the problem is uh, knight captures an f8 check will pick up the queen, and there is no way to avoid this. You cannot uh, really move the king anywhere. You cannot move the, uh, 
the, the queen, uh, if you play something like queen to g5, then just rook to h3 check. And again, the king has no squares. You're just going to deliver a nice checkmate. Even knight captures, rook captures, and now a nice check, a forced checkmate with king captures and queen to g6 checkmate. So here, bishop to d6 was played. Ispenko finds a way to give up um, the queen uh, and at least grab some material. Uh, but it doesn't help him all that much. Knight to f8 with check. Rook captures on f8. Now queen captures on h5 with check. King to g8 and now pawn to f6. And yes, you do have two bishops and a knight for the queen and even um, uh, some nice pawns here. Uh, but they are uh, so far away from the action. It, it just doesn't matter. Knight to e5. Yespenko tries bringing his pieces to help out the king. But now rook to f5. We have pawn to g6. Queen to g5 not allowing the capture here. And now D captures on E3. Espenko creates a pass pawn on E3, but now he has to give up material. Rook captures on E5. King to f7, you don't really gain anything by, by capturing uh, the, because the g6 pawn is now also hanging. You get checkmated. So king to f7, you have to defend the g6 pawn. Rook captures on e3. And now this is really not enough uh, uh, for any sort of serious counterplay. With bishop to c5, you do win the rook. Still not enough. Pawn to b4, even forcing this capture. And notice how Noderbeck always in every game, even if you can win the game without playing a b4, he always plays it. And we can learn something from him. Uh, uh, bishop captures on e3, queen captures rook to e8. Now it's a queen and a queen against bishop and rook, uh, but I mean not much to be done here. Queen to c3 defends the pawn on f6, also threatens queen to c7 check to win the bishop because rook to e7 is impossible. Bishop to c8 and now pawn to a4. It's time to create a second weakness. Uh, we have bishop to f, uh, sorry, not bishop to e6, bishop to f5, and now. Uh, just pawn to h3, creating some breeding room for the white king. Rook to d8, preparing to push the pawn because you already have these squares covered, but now queen to d4, blockading the pawn, not giving any counterplay to Yesipenko. Uh, bishop to e6, now g4. And once g5 hits, then the f6 pawn is protected, and then it's merely a matter of time. You, you will either get checkmated um, uh, via some uh, queen maneuvering, or you will create a, 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 another pass pawn and just win the game that way. Uh, doesn't really matter. Also, a5 is covered. Coming. So th there's just too much um, uh, in, in White's arsenal here. So rook to c8, we have pawn to g5, rook to c1 check, king to uh, king to f2, rook to c2 check, king to g3. And he was in this position on move 41 that Andreas Penko resigned the game. And what a magical victory for Noderbeck Abdusatrov in round one of the WR Chess Masters tournament. Now, for those of you who are interested, how does um, uh, how, how does this actually conclude? Uh, the, like I said, there are too many weaknesses for black. Black will have to keep an eye on uh, the, the seventh rank because if the white queen in infiltrates it's over now you just start pushing and it doesn't matter like rook c4 you're gonna play queen e5 now just uh, trying to infiltrate here if rook c6 uh, you can even play b5 which would not be possible if b4 was not played and once you move the rook once again queen d6 and that's it now you can give a few more checks like king f2 rook to c2 check king e3 even d4 check if you capture queen to, uh, rook to d2 check will pick up the white queen but it doesn't matter. King to f3, rook to c3 check, king f4, and this is one of the positions that might come up. Uh, you are getting checkmated next uh, on, on the, uh, not on the next move, but in a, in a few moves, uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so yeah, truly spectacular stuff by uh, by Abdul Satarov, and it's really remarkable how uh, how quickly it, it all happened. I mean, like knight captures on d2, it's such a such a principled decision uh, that that you would uh, I mean you, you would applaud like if you saw someone uh, like if you saw your child play this you would say wow that's a very principled decision uh, but here it's exactly this principled decision that allowed this spectacular attack and the downfall of a great player like uh, Andrei Yesipenko uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys uh, enjoyed it thank you everyone for for recommending it it's truly an amazing game uh, I would like to thank uh, Ricky Black Cash Johnson Robert Trenton Rodney Barr and Bullet King for for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, everything that's happening in the chess world, and I do have a very, very special video coming up next, so stay tuned for that one. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your weekend.